Well, hey there, and welcome back to the Drawing Database. Professor Mark Leone here, and today I have the pleasure to bring you uh, and spend 15 minutes or so with the drawings of American um, icon and one of the biggest names in American art of the 20th century, and that is Jasper Johns. Uh, Jasper Johns was born in 1930. He's Southern, born in uh, Augusta, Georgia, and he is associated with um, really kind of pop art, sort of neo-Dada happenings with uh, Rauschenberg and that generation of artists, a little bit of abs abstract expressionism. Um, certainly thoroughly a modern um, artist and still practicing today at the tender young age of 91. So Jasper Johns and his drawing. So if you know anything about Jasper Johns, you know that in his um, late 20s and, and probably early 30s, he hit the art world um, pretty pretty boldly with iconic images of American flags painted, also in acoustic, but he also did drawings of American flags, and that's what we'll take a look at uh, in our first image. We see a gridded structure here of the layout of an American uh, flag with 13 bars and, and the uh, stars and, and stripes, if you will, if you're not American. And then along came recontextualizing the image with abstract mark making, gestural mark making, different fluid uh, marks of uh, thickness and varying weights and smudges and smears to give some differentiation to the context of the iconic uh, American flag. So you won't see figurative work here. What you'll see primarily in John's is a kind of uh, layering, a tracing, a drawing, an abstraction, a recontextualizing, a figura figurization, and a way to find new avenues into art making and new context for um, reconstituted everyday kind of objects and certainly the American flag for those of us in the United States is, is an everyday kind of an object. It has such an energy and such a kind of movement. Hopefully it will it will give you some understanding into art making that art doesn't have to be uh, completely and always figurative. It can be purely abstract or some fall somewhere in between like Jasper Johns's work. This one's even more dense and more packed in uh, <clears throat> with drawing material. We see overlaid uh, graphite here all over the uh, the flag in different hatching and cross hatching marks. If you go back and and again look at art history and drawing, you see that the hatched mark and the cross hatching mark that we see is an iconic um, language built into drawing to give form, turn, and movement and to build up value, to build up darks, to build up spatial uh, volume and, and atmosphere in darks. And he does that in a way that it as abstracts uh, the work. And I love the, the leaving of the edges almost a little bit frayed. So it has a very kind of woven quality to it. He also comes in on underneath with some kind of watered down laying of perhaps ink or maybe water and uh, graphite. You can mix graphite powder and water and use it as a kind of a liquid form and then it dries and it sticks to itself into uh, a paper. Um, and the more graphite you add to it, the more it um, uh, it gets chalky and built up and then some of that sloughs off that doesn't stick to uh, the, the paper or the surface that you're using. And then the wonderful rendered stars that are a little hand drawn right See how you know. Whoops! See how clunky they are. Um, can't use the clone tool, but they have a kind of hand-drawn uh, approach to, I think, uh, the drawing process, which gives them a kind of urgency and a certain kind of, um, again, homemade quality. That's not so industrial. Almost like everything is, in a way, sewn on. Um, rather than industrially built. Uh, so I think, again, a uh, really rich drawing in iconic American flag done in 1955. So he was born, I believe he was born in, when was he born in? Let's see, again, 1930, right? I said that's correct. So I'd be 25 years old, so awfully young to kind of begin to uh, set a standard for modern art in the 20th century in the United States. Here that language is transferred over to a simple placemat 
Um, we have a drawing on vellum or on a plastic kind of sheeting, almost like tracing paper, but a little bit um, cloudier, um, a little bit um, th obviously much thicker and much more durable. And you can, if you know enough about drawing, you can see that it has a plasticky kind of filming in some of these areas where he's using graphite and perhaps ink to use a brush and then to come on with this wonderful on top of this wonderful kind of scratchy quality. So adding texture, the not the illusion, but the the um, the scribbled kind of texture, the brush stroke mark, if you will, uh, transparently through in the addition of simple utensils. We've seen this kind of spirit and attitude also in the drawings of um, modern artist uh, Jim Dine uh, as well. So we see the contextualing or the recontextualization, if you will, of just a simple placemat. It becomes a little flatter. It becomes um, more iconic than if it were laid down on a piece of paper and drawn in more perspective. So it almost, again, works like a flat rectangle, just like the flag. So he's really making an emphasis on the use of the rectangle in a kind of abstraction, abstract expressionism within the kind of range of still being referential, if you will, to everyday utensils and objects that we use to eat. This object is again on vellum where we're using washes of ink. So here we have a later drawing after the American flag series. He re repurposes the flag in more compartmentalized kinds of directions. This probably drawing was done probably in the 80s or 90s, that series of works. And you'll see Jasper Johns throughout his career use the hatched mark the linear mark, both uh, vertical and horizontal, and also diagonal, and then he places them within these strange sort of compartmentalized uh, organic shapes. So there's the geometric and also the organic, and then the relaxed geometry, if you will, of the American flags. And then we see down here um, something he used quite often was a double play on uh, our vision between the simple Voss, but if you look closer at it, you see the the silhouettes of two heads of what is probably uh, a male in through here. So let me take that off so you can see that better. And we see that in numerous drawings and prints of his. Jasper Johns was also a sculptor, a very interesting sculpt sculptor that he used. Again, um, the repurposing of everyday objects. You can think of Jasper Johns' work as a continuation somewhat um, within Dada abstract expressionism, but also heavily influenced by Marcel Duchamp, um, really the godfather and the one of the giants of the 20th century in terms of movements of more conceptualized, um, intellectualized forms of thinking about um, art as more of uh, idea-based rather than just plastic or synthetic material kinds of base or narrative base that we've seen. We see a type of engine, a turning of steel, uh, steam with the faucets in through here, and again the dense layering of uh, drawing within hatching and also cross-hatching uh, kinds of techniques here. I thought it'd be great to, to kind of pull out a little bit and see a series of drawings um, that he did of skeletons and skeletal human kinds of figurations. So these are figurative, but they retain a sense of uh, fluidity, of mark making, of some abstraction, of painting within the drawing. They're all drawing materials, ink, graphite, some charcoal. Um, and then there's a repetitive spirit, isn't there, to all of these working in a series of images. In general, this is a good place to understand that artists work in a series, generally contemporary um, a modern artists work in a series of images um, primarily to explore an ideal until it, idea until it's run its course. I certainly do that in my own personal work and no different here uh, is John's in exploring the same kind of iconography of a central kind of skeletal image almost like a Leonardo kind of laid out. We can get a better view of that and I'll, I'll scroll through, through here. Um, and then he, he again placed in the vertical rectangle and explores very different possibilities within the um, repetitive structure of the image. So there's, there's a kind of pop idea going on of re repetition that Warhol uh, took great advantage of, but yet there's more variation 
than most of what Warhol had done with um, the his works. And certainly there's a real interest in John's in drawing, quite a bit of drawing with different um, Again, take a look at these two images right here. We see one very, very light and pale, and we see its antithesis very dark and very dense, and we see some, some spots in places that are kind of uh, in between. So, again, it's good to see uh, entire bodies of work here uh, laid out in a gallery, you know, framed in a gallery setting, which makes it, um, I think, more interesting to see it cumulatively, to see what the entire thinking is in this uh, series of works. And it's quite possible he did three or four times as many of these, and these were the only ones that he felt that were worthy to be shown. It's quite a bit of possibility. And that's just conjecture on my part. And then lastly, John's in the studio as a, as a younger man, probably in his uh, mid-30s to 40s. He did a, a, a quite a bit of numbers of drawings, and a series of drawings where each number from one or excuse me, from 0 to 9, or you could even include 10 if you want. And of course all the numbers are there to load up um, the calculator with as, as many numbers as possible, but each number is represented within the drawing structure from 0 all the way to uh, number 9, and it just works together, the meshing together of how these works. He did numerous drawings of these. Can you find all the numbers? 4, and then 5, and then six uh, uh, long enough, you can find that. Curious, I don't remember him doing alphabets this way, but certainly numbers, and he did multiples, many, many different paintings and vibrant, saturated uh, colors too, uh, as well. And, you know, a very simple concept kind of an idea um, for its own merits that, um, again, really shook up the art world in his particular early time here in the 60s, probably in the 70s. And um, again, drawing was at the center or the basis of that. Also notice that, you know, a more modern artist not working on a drafting table, but working on a wall, uh, purely but wall. And then we have a, a you know, paste, piece of paper stapled, you know, very kind of uh, nonchalantly stapled to the wall. And then he goes aggressively uh, at the drawing to, to formulate the particular um, uh, serif numbers. Jasper Johns, giant of American art and uh, certainly post-World War II art, still alive, still making work, and still important.